All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Space Dandy, Dandy Season 2, two episode, episode 12. 12. The penultimate episode of yep. the series. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. We're almost done with this dandy show. I am not happy about that. I have had such a dandy time with it that I, I feel like I, I really need, you know, something... Something momentous to build us up for the finale. Like a Dr. Gel backstory focus episode. You know, you know, like, I, I... Just saying. I wouldn't hate that. Like, there's, I feel like there's a lot of potential there <laughs> that's gone unexplored largely, yeah. you know, so yeah. far. All I want is at some point to have some sort of Avengers Assemble moment of either yes. all the side characters or all the dandies. Sure. Like something along those lines. Uh-huh. Realities and, converging and... Yep. 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 All everything collapsing and assembling and everything like that. That would be rather um, wonderful. But yeah, yeah. If we're not getting a two-parter finale, though, then I, I really need something that gets at the existential stuff, maybe, mm. a little bit more. What I would love to see yeah. is one more experience with... Space Dandy. He's a dandy guy ah, in space. With the because, opening bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I feel like it's it really has been a while since we've heard that. And and if it we're has, not gonna actually. hear it again for the rest of the show, I I feel like that'll be that'll be kinda sad. Maybe that'll be the final like the uh, final thing at on the, the very, last very, episode. Very end. Yeah, at the very end, it's he's a dandy guy in space. And maybe yeah. it'll be slightly like altered or something. Sure. That could be pretty cool. But y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, courtroom? Oh, we will now begin the trial oh. of defendant Mr. Dandy, also known as Space Dandy, who has been what? charged with the murder of Guy Reginald. All right, I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> Dandy's day in court, baby. All right. Why is day not capitalized? Mm. But court is. Ugh. At 3 a.m. suburbia standard time on the 12th day of the 13th month, a heinous crime was committed with a baseball. In a fit of brutality, a nefarious monster murdered Guy Reginald. And that monster is Space Dandy. Oh my god, this voice. All for now. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Miss Scott, uh. do you know the defendant, Mr. Dandy? Yes. He's a regular at the Alien Registration Center. And would mm. you please inform the court of his track record with registered aliens? Well, I suppose it's abnormal for him to bring in anything very impressive. Then I suppose the court can suppose <laughs> he had no proven track record. The defendant with no credentials or achievements was desperate. So desperate he'd use any means necessary to get that reward money. A conjecture, sir. Yeah. Miss Scarlet, yep. I have a question now. If yep. the Meshian were in fact registered, how much would that reward money be? I'd say approximately a million rulongs. Ooh. Thank you. I have no more questions. Hmm. <laughs> Who were you and what were you doing at the time of the crime? I uh, meow. Uh, Dandy said to wait, so I was at the emergency exit and didn't see anything. He was super stoked because we hadn't made any money in like forever. <laughs> Dandy doesn't list you as a crew member. His affidavit claims you're just a cat. A cat he unsuccessfully tried to sell to a pet shop. He chose to keep you on as a freeloader because no one else would take you. What? <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, I kind of figured he'd snap eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Oh my God. Can you tell the court where you were at the time of the crime? I was standing by with the ship, so I was never technically at the scene. Oh. He was in a thrift shop trying to buy a robot like that R2D2, but he accidentally ended up buying you a clean. He stayed here. He kept you because you were too much trouble to return. Yes. I always thought it wouldn't be very surprising if he committed a crime. So basically, you're saying you're not surprised the defendant's violent nature led to a murder. Speculation! This is all circumstantial! Yep. Yep. Mm. But wow, this prosecution's really doing a good job of tearing the crew apart. Yeah. Exhibit A, the murder. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yes. Here comes Jell. Yeah. Here comes Jell. Uh-huh. Your Honor, look, hmm. there's a name written on here. Indeed there is. Oh. In that case, Your Honor, I would hmm. like to call a new witness to the stand. Hiroshi. All right. Mr. Hiroshi from Planet Turbo. Yes, sir. <laughs> you recognize this ball, son. 
Oh. Yes, it belongs to me, sir. Well, I was playing baseball with Jack in our neighborhood's vacant lot, and Jeepers, it just flat out disappeared. Thank you, sir. I hmm. think we should have his friend testify, too. Da -da. <laughs> this gets more and more complicated. Yeah. However, was it necessary for Mr. Dandy to steal the murder weapon at all? I love how it's like an actual camera, you know? Yeah. Your Honor, what I am detecting from both the defendant and the murder weapon are trace amounts of pionium. His DNA doesn't matter. This proves he was in contact Wait with a the minute. Pionium, you say? Please is this not Dandy? What is this substance? Pionium was introduced in a previous episode, yeah. wasn't it? We believe that this particle is able to bend time and space in order to cross dimensions and potentially holds a vast amount of energy. That unique quality is the reason scientists like myself refer to it as the God particle. And would it be what? To say this particle is particularly All right. rare? Very rare, sir. These are the documents for the victim's life insurance policy. The payment in the event of his death is far greater than the registration center's reward. 50 million Wulongs. What? Oh. I would like to call a previous witness back hmm. to the stand. Yeah. Reginald who conveniently found the body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Hmm. Furthermore, I have documents here from the internet store known as Tamazon. These receipts <laughs> recently purchased the following item. What's wrong, Rose? Thorn got your tongue? <laughs> ah, honey! Mm. You work at Boobies with Rose Reginald, correct? Yeah. On the mm. day of the incident, did the defendant dandy visit your restaurant? Uh-huh, I think he bought like a cup of coffee and then stayed for five hours. Ah, you're wrong. <laughs> like your... <laughs> <laughs> Skimping hard. It's a tale as old as time. A greedy wife and her alien hunter lover committing insurance fraud. Dandy. Blinded by the wiles of a woman. We're talking about boobies, so I wouldn't put it past <laughs> <laughs> He's always saying his whole reason for living is boobies. Well, let's examine the video. No, it's butts. <laughs> Inside boobies. Yeah, yeah. So you were acquainted with the defendant, Mr. Dandy. Mm. Not like that. He's a customer. Why aren't you saying anything? You're making everyone suspicious. Is he even conscious? You were after that insurance money. So you bought various weapons to kill mm. him and met Dandy at Boobies. Then you hired him to kill your husband. Mm. Isn't that correct? You're guilty too. You're wrong. I swear. I love how the defendant <laughs> yeah. is like yeah. trying to throw Dandy under the bus. Yeah. And the prosecutor is helping the defendant. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, how about you take the shine off it for me? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Have reacted to someone's intent to kill. If killing intent came from Planet Turbo, well, that emotion could bend space, causing the ball to cross dimensions to oh. the killing intent. That explains why Pionium was found on the I just wanted to kill that ball with the bat. <laughs> right. A question for the jury. Now that arguments have been presented, we'll proceed to the next phase. Oh my god, what is this trial? This is so yep. crazy. Does the defendant have anything at all? Found out. This time? It appears the answer is no. <laughs> what? Have you yeah, seriously. Take a hard look at the facts in this case. He's either decide the application of the law. Well, he's either completely asleep. Or like, this like, is not dandy. I'm like, like yeah. I'm totally getting the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> so the baseball kids are also on social media. Right. Okay. So the kids know maybe what's going on. Maybe. All right, who's on the jury? Oh my god. Hmm. I never saw a guiltier man in my life. agree. Hey boy, we're talking about life and death. Oh my god. Oh. It's the Twitter of that witness boy. Hmm. Okay, what what is he saying though? Now, it's the bruise he got from that 16 giga kick. What? Wait, what? The main focus of this case is intent. Who did that strong emotion come from? Winner might hold that answer. Typically, the kind of Hiroshi, the only murderous baseball. What Twitter? How is that a verdict? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know that too. Who wanted to kill somebody? Can it, will ya? Uh, oh no! 
Are we gonna get a confession? I am going to kill you now with a Jack of Bennett batting form. L-O-L. Oh, dang. That's an intense baseball game. <laughs> oh my god. That's where the strong killing intent resonated with the Pionium. Crossing mm. through space and turning that ordinary baseball into a disappearing miracle murder ball. <laughs> what the heck? Like you wanted to know. kill me? You blocked me from your Twitter! You were supposed to be my friend! When I joined, I couldn't wait to follow you! But when I tried, I found out you'd already blocked me! What kind of friend pulls that stunt? But you're not a friend at all, and you never were, you liar! I hate you! You dipstick! Holy crap! Why am I still here, Your Honor? I think it's my responsibility to clear Rose Reginald's yeah. name. Oh, yeah. I yes. I regarding the weapons you purchased. You actually bought those items for your husband, didn't you, dear? I've mm. seen that footmark on your husband's chest at the Space of Hall match in 83. I remember that fight well. I'm sure everyone does. That's when he took the 16 giga kick in the famous barber match. So, they didn't want to know his identity. Ah. Because it's a private, like, fighting ring. Sure. Guy original was the messenger from hell himself. The destroyer. The destroyer. He was the of his time, but his talent was squandered by the league. He lost his career and fell into despair. You believe? Ah, uh, since he's been out of work. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you bought those weapons as a birthday gift, didn't you? So then, what? What was Dandy's involvement in all this? <laughs> he was just trying to collect an alien. Or was he not? It seems Mr. Reginald has regained consciousness. What? Apparently he suffers from sleep apnea and slumbers for long periods of time. And being that he's such a rare alien, the coroner misdiagnosed Mr. Reginald as deceased. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, raise my uh. then what was the point of this entire trial? <laughs> And he wakes up. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This court is adjourned. Why did the ball travel 5,000 parsecs and appear at Dandy's location? It suggests an even more intense concentration of Pionium was there to pull the ball through dimensions. From Dandy. Dandy. There's no way. I can't believe anyone could sleep that long. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, what's that about? Uh. Did Dr. Gel finally catch Dandy? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, to be continued. To be continued! Are we actually getting a two parter? Wait. Oh, hold on. I am very confused. Like, <laughs> well, what it is is that Dandy has been the one this whole time. But of course, and naturally. all realities bending space and time converge at a single point, and this Definitely. Pionium is basically at a single just, coordinate. Right, right, exactly. All these paths lead to him being the one that is the center of the universe, and right. all that is because uh -huh. of his Dandy way. Now, all of reality will begin to start pulling in towards him and if he doesn't spread the dandy way to the universe all of reality will end and these people came to him to be like it's happening we have to stop it dandy you're our last hope all right and he's like baby it's all you had to say i don't see how and any of that connects to this episode other than the baseball thing the baseball thing is just the proof that cool the realities are starting to collapse in on themselves sure. 
All right, well, we got dandy in court. Yep, uh, and uh, good old twelve angry men. Yeah, or, or or even even something. better the uh, the whole uh, my cousin Vinny because of the way they have a southerner kind of yeah, prosecutor. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, like every time the prosecutor opened his mouth, it was like in your professional opinion. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> you know, as a call expert. The, yeah, I love how there were some aspects of it that was like taking the whole court proceedings thing very seriously. Sure, sure, yeah. In other aspects where it's like, okay, what the hell, now the defendant and the prosecutor aren't even talking about the actual defendant, <laughs> like, like the, you know, the, the person that's being charged, and right. now they're they're getting wrapped accusing, up. like, one of the people they, they called as a witness. All right, 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 yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I would love to have the, the Legal Eagle channel look at this uh, episode <laughs> and basically, like, rate it on a scale of court like systems and stuff like that, given that it's so fantastical oh, and ridiculous. Man. Yeah. That would be amazing. That would be but, wonderful. But, um, okay. What I loved was also that, like, there were a bunch of things where we seemed to, like, kind of call what was going to happen, but it still worked so well when it actually happened. Like, Dandy being asleep this whole time. Yes. Uh -huh. Perfect. Perfect. Of I course. Loved, Why not? I, I loved how they brought space time into it. Like, mm. and yes. basically set us up for a finale where Dandy's un anomalous kind of nature is being like explored in an interesting way here yep just yeah you know it's like because, oh okay weird because we can't just have it be a crime we need mm. to have it be a space crime and then a space time crime space time crime yes, yes. indeed yes. but still having twitter just mm -hmm. straight up Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. Yeah. So there were a lot of <laughs> online media and just website little references and stuff like that. There was Tamazon. Uh -huh. That was that was funny. Yep. But the the Twitter one this episode felt like it was entirely just the joke set piece, you know? Yeah. There wasn't anything necessarily super deep about it, except they were like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. These kids one of the kids was wanting to murder his friend. Right, because he got blocked on because Twitter. Because he got blocked on Twitter before his friend right, let when, him before follow him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, okay. it, and, and it's All funny right. because I wonder if at this point in Twitter you couldn't, like, unfollow someone. So it's like, hey, sure. you know, I mean... They'd never know. Well, but but what's just so funny about this, it's like, no, Twitter nowadays, no, I can see that actually. Yeah, yeah. Like this, this was before its time because, as you all know, Twitter is an absolute cesspit of awful. So, yeah, that that seemed rather fitting. It did, didn't it? But, you it know, just, the fact that they're like, so well. the and fact they're that they're like little 12, kids as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, all right, yeah, there we go. Sure. Why also, not? I liked the the baseball reference with the uh, trying to ah. intentionally break the bat yes. on contact with the ball in order to send the pieces at the pitcher. It wouldn't kill them, but but there have been injuries in the past of that nature where pieces of wood were sent hurtling, you know, towards the uh, the pitcher. Also, batters used to back in the day when baseball was a lot more chaotic mm. would just huck their bats at the pitcher if they were upset. Really? Because because think about it. Who's going to stop the batter first? The catcher and the umpire are, behind are them. well not only behind them, they're weighed down with heavier stuff. That's so the true. tricky thing like within when people would just go crazy. And shortstop and you know. Yeah, yeah. Basically you have to bank on the fact that well the batter is alone. <laughs> There's no one else right. on their team that's gonna be close. But there have been tons of times where the batter just charges the mound with the bat in hand, either throwing oh it or God. like about to hit the pitcher, and then suddenly everyone descends on it. But the pitcher has that like brief two seconds yeah. where they have to like figure out what they're gonna do. And it's oh like, God. oh my god, that's terrifying. That is, um, that's, that's really something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. I mean, that these are outliers really of outliers. You right. Know, and like, probably like back in the forties or something, you know. Well, like, baseball has been around since the 1800s. So right, like, it's, it's been around for a while. It's, yeah. yeah. And also the pitcher used to be a lot closer, like a lot closer, like way back. So, uh, so right. if you think about how fast a, a pro athlete could uh -huh. get, you know, yep. to cross that distance. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. anyway. Here we go, Dandy having his friends kind of turned against him via this whole process here, even though they're not really turning against him, they're more just like, yeah, we have pretty low standards when it comes to Dandy. Right, which is understandable. I mean, Dandy isn't exactly one that instills a great deal of confidence, you know? Except those points 
where he really does come in. So I was really surprised that they bought so quickly that he said those nasty things about them. I because mean, some of them, some of them I understood. He definitely likes QT a lot more than he likes Meow. Like that, that is, is that is yeah. just true. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole thing of the I wanted an R two D two and all I got was this. Like that's. Yeah, okay. Like, I totally like, believe I that Dandy it, would yeah. say that. Yeah. Right, right. But the fact that they weren't like, oh, wow. Okay, well, I guess he is very capable of this kind of thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, Scarlet being there as a, like a character witness or just, just a witness in general was, was great because we just had recently their, the little, romance episode. their little Lovers Are Trendy episode, uh-huh. which that was fun. Yeah. Um, uh, but... Yeah, yeah. Dandy getting ca- caught up in this convoluted mess that turns out to actually just not be even a, be a murderer. Not even be a murder, but also be kind of a wholesome story about an ex like wrestler mm-hmm. that was like out of work and is struggling to figure out a way to find like purpose in life. And, and then his wife is trying, trying to, trying to like give him these cool weapons and stuff so that he can like, you know, try and like find some like uh, connections back to his old life or something like that. Yeah. And she would never give up his secret identity as being this massive <laughs> pro wrestler and stuff like yep. that. And then he's actually alive. So it's yeah, I <laughs> I feel like this episode was all of just the pure random chaos energy of Dandy mm. mashed into one thing. Like right. the whole bit with the, the kids. The set piece of the court. Yeah. Right, right, the set piece of the court. Because right. the whole thing of like the kids playing the baseball and all that stuff happening, mm-hmm. I could have seen that being like almost in an episode by itself. True, true. The fact that yeah. it actually ties into this whole thing with the pro wrestler and all that stuff, it's like, okay, I right, all right, yeah, that also totally. could have been its own thing, but c- cool, cool, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I was again, I, maybe this is just a, a thing that I need to accept now that there's only one episode left of the show. Uh, but you gotcha. you mentioned it, and I was really hoping it would happen. Mm. Tweeting about it. Dr. Jell could have showed up. That's true. As another witness, even, maybe. But maybe that's know? who these soldiers were. Maybe. That's... Because Dandy did get basically taken by mm-hmm. this massive, like, regiment of alien soldiers. So maybe those aren't necessarily Dr. Jell's soldiers. Those could be... Um, Ooh, uh, the, the Dr. Jell's overseer. What's his name? Uh, right, right, mm-hmm. yes. Um, shoot. I don't think we ever put down his name because we were he's like, he's so clearly not important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, the overlord of right. necromantic Skeleton lich man. lord. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. So if he ends up basically grabbing Dandy, that could be something. It could also be... Uh, Dandy's ex band buddy and his, you know, That's faction. True. Because we did get something this episode that we've never really gotten before. And I'm mm. not entirely sure how serious they're being with it, oh. but it said to be continued. That's true. Which, that in and of itself, I mean, yeah, we've never had a cliffhanger in Dandy, really, but. Yeah, not really. But I feel like those designs for yeah. the for the soldiers, I feel like we've seen them before. Maybe it was with I the, like the music of... buddy, or, or maybe it's just there was a similar design with like the. Maybe. Um, what was the girl that he helped back way back in that one episode? Season one? Yeah, yeah, of season one that, like, ha- she could m- move things into objects and whatnot. Oh, right, like, right, uh-huh. I, it's yeah. probably different, but that was a while ago enough that I don't fully remember, but it, they looked kind of similar, I felt like. Yeah. But It is weird, though, that if it was someone affiliated with Dr. Jell and their whole side of things their whole empire is like they're like the gogol empire gogol I think. empire yeah, yeah. then <laughs> gogol did... empire i think on the second to last episode <laughs> yeah that's how important it is yeah, right right exactly yeah it's like wait wouldn't dr gel actually like have some little like oh yes we've exactly. we've apprehended dandy you know right. he would have some like little monologue moment with well, him and his assistant and know? also this looks far too competent to be dr gel's work true you know like like unfortunately true I mean, yeah. come on they yeah. always have to do the convoluted things that never work and explode in their face <laughs> right? literally right like, you can't yeah. actually have a plan that might work to apprehend dandy no that no just, not no, at all that's old hat that's yeah definitely not gonna happen mm-hmm. uh, but if anything this is the first time dandy has been caught seemingly by those who are after him for his like 
his like his specialness, whatever right. whatever that is. That the thing the about pionium, him. yeah. Yeah, his 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 thing that all realities warp around him and stuff like that. Watch. that he's he's <laughs> the center of all the multiverse. Yep. Uh, he's the point where the multiverse basically collapses in on itself at a little exactly. focal point or something. Yep, yep, a single coordinate. But yep. the, what might happen is that this is all a uh, an obstacle that mm. will force Dandy to awaken his latent power with the Pionium and truly, you know, the the god element or whatever they called it. So right? he just pose his way to victory then, right? Yeah, exactly. And and, and the universe a, will be rewritten monologue. and exactly. It feels like yeah. it feels like one half of a Bill and Ted's excellent adventure like does, you know, TV show it? finale. Where it's like, oh yeah, dude. You right. know, we gotta we gotta defeat death. Wait, no, death is our buddy. And then yeah. you're like, yeah, and then let's we, go time travel to solve this or whatever. Remember right, a right. trash can, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. want I want the dandy levels of that absurdity. Yeah, that would be Where everything has up, oh, been yes. up to the scale of the universe and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Because this show has shown that they're capable of doing not only wacky things, but bombastic, big, wacky things. That is very true. Like, I, I, I really loved what they did in the concert episode. Like, the idea of there being this galactic war that's uh-huh. like put on a hold because right. he had the emperor had to show up for his band's you know first big live gig stage yeah. performance and everything uh-huh. yes all of that but let's get like all the side characters in there mm. let's get like every single person we didn't even know that mattered or <laughs> anything like that yep, all make of us them. make us believe there was all this continuity involved <laughs> right, and exactly. everything and then yep. And then just go out in a bang with him like doing this, and then the universe like wow warps or something. Sure, yeah, I love it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, other than that, this episode was really fun. Reminded me of some some courtroom comedy drama yep. stuff I've seen, and uh, had lots of little objection and you know, oh uh, yeah, it was. Little- Exclamations yelled out <laughs> that were uh, overruled or sub- sustained or, or whatever. Yeah, the right so. amount of wacky with serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Also, I just love the voices. The voices. The voices were, the were wonderful. Were so good. So that is very it literally true. inspired me for like, I'm taking that voice, I'm stealing that voice, oh, really? and I'm like, I'm gonna take those and just kind of add them into my repertoire and then oh, see boy. what 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 could be the uh, the equivalent uh, version that I would bring up hmm. because. The defendant is known to be a, a, yeah. a cavorting with aliens or something. You yeah, know, that, just just that voice is just uh, it's it's the perfect level of like cringe mm-hmm. and um, yeah. Yes, this yes. episode this episode was rather wonderful, and it was a great example again of how fantastic the dub is. Mm, yeah. True. Although I'm sure it must have been pretty pretty amazing in the sub as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general, and you can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. That's right. I wrote a sci-fi novel in space. It's about mm-hmm. space soldiers in space. It's called Battle Lines. It's on Amazon. The link is in the description. Yes, yeah, so if any of that interest you will see it there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time